Welcome to Arete Grade 10, <coughs> Unit 1, the Moral Context in Relation to Others. <coughs> Let's start with the opening prayer. May the wisdom of the All-Compassionate One so shine within our hearts and minds this day, that we may be enlightened in our acts, thoughts and deeds. So shall we learn to be true, good and happy, and attain the spiritual peace. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya and Namo Buddhaya. So today we're on to lesson two. Um, <clears throat> but first of all, I'm going to do a quick recap about the overall unit one. So we've got lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and lesson four, which make up unit one. So the very important point to start off with is it's about, it talks about the human person as a moral being not an immoral being. We do have this essence of right and wrong and good and bad. In this unit we explore the concepts of intellect and free will, the moral context of our relationship with others, freedom and decision-making, and dignity as an innate value. <clears throat> the unit allows us to discover important concepts that will shed light on the following questions. Are we fully capable of coming up with correct decisions? So I want you to answer and submit that. And I'm hoping that your answers will develop as we go through the unit. You, you say, I've already answered that one before. Well, you may have to, in life, you'll have to go back and re-answer many questions. <clears throat> so I'm hoping you're getting more fluent with that question and this one why why are we accountable why are we accountable for the consequences of our decisions and actions why put your answer and submit or hands up <clears throat> and what is the moral context of relating with other people how does that work out how's the good and bad and right and wrong how does that go together with the way you relate with other people and how can we promote, sorry, protect and promote human dignity? How can we do that? So I'll answer and submit that one as well. So that should also be developing. In this unit, we can find real life examples wherein the concepts of intellect, human freedom, relationship, and human dignity are demonstrated as well as the challenges that we must face and respond to if we are to create a moral and just society. Also values such as mindfulness, justice, selflessness and reverence for life are, are highlighted and intimately linked with how we are supposed to live and act with others in the society. So that's the end of the introduction which is way back at the page one uh, but we need to recap that to remember what's the umbrella topic, what's the overarching theme. Right then, dear students, I'd like to kindly ask you to share your uh, insights that you gain from lesson one. From lesson one. So just a heads up. The lesson one was about rediscovering intellect and free will. So it's all about choice making. Isn't it? So please answer and submit those. <clears throat> now we're going to start off with a group activity, and this refers to page twelve. This refers to page twelve um, indirectly. We're just at the beginning of lesson two. So join the groups provided on messenger groups, and these are composed of five to eight members. Five to eight members. And those, are, those groups have already been created by me, uh, and they're on Messenger. So look for them under G10 Mini PT Group Number. No, we would just say Group 1 or Group 2 or Group 3 or Group 4, like that. Uh, lesson 2, page 12. Then please draw a storyboard for a one-minute movie about a family which shows any of the following. So you're going to be making a storyboard for a movie. <clears throat> P 
presence, selflessness, communication, love, right? So those, it could be about a one, one minute movie about the family, which shows about presence, the opposite of absence. Um, about the family, which shows selflessness, as opposed to selfishness. A uh, one-minute movie about the family, which shows communication, as opposed to non-communication. One-minute movie about a family, which shows love, as opposed to cold cruelty, or hate, anger, fear. All right, so that's your mini performance task. And then let's share your mini PT storyboards to the class. So I want one of your group or more to, pre to present the storyboard. And then we will share that video that you make about sharing it on the class uh, group chat. <coughs> moving on, <coughs> moving on, excuse me. Page 12, kindly read the text, the introduction and then the story afterwards, Pinoy Malachine, on page 12 to 13. <clears throat> so read the introduction, and we start off with a quote from the Bible, by in the Gospel of John, 15, 13, and that is this quote, There is no greater love than, it, than this, that a person would lay down his life for the sake of his friend. So, the introduction. Man is a social being. From the moment we are born into the world, to our growth and pursuit of our dreams, even till our passing, we are in the presence of our fellow human beings. We constantly relate to and interact with our family members, friends, classmates, neighbors, workmates, co-members from organizations and others. It is in these relationships and interactions that we discover ourselves, pursue our dreams, share our talents and skills and strive for self-actualization. Do you enjoy watching movies wherein the characters have superpowers? Usually the heroes are using their superpowers to fight a villain and do some good. While such films are anchored on fantasy, our ability to do good does not. In fact, we do not need superpowers to put things in order, provided that they are under our circle of influence. <clears throat> Going further, we can even assert that we already have superpowers, such as our unique skills and talents, which we can utilize to make this world a better place. Let us look at one unique Filipino who used his talents and skills to help his fellow men. Mark David Serezzo, a resident of Marikina City, is fondly called the Rubber Man. So we're on the story now. He is a talented artist who transforms scrap rubber into toys, I should say, sculptures, puppets, and other forms of decorative artwork. The Rubber Man's power in shaping rubber has evolved to molding the hearts of the youth and saving the environment. In 2006, Rubberman founded Pinoy Malikayim, a group which teaches children to recycle and save the environment through art. Mark leads the group in providing free art and crafts seminars in, in remote schools and poor areas in Metro Manila every weekend. Using part of the profits from the sale of his rubber toys and artwork, he buys school supplies, which he then donates to daycare centers in Marikina City and other neighboring towns. <clears throat> when Typhoon Yolanda devastated the provinces of Samar and Lete, 
Rabbi Man mobilized his team of selfless heroes from Pinoy Malakayim and provided stress debriefing should be, to the youth victims of the calamity. He used his rubber puppets and toys to put a smile on their distressed faces, it should be, bringing them optimism and a new hope. In 2011, Rubberman's craft, hard work, dedication and selflessness brought him recognition. He was hailed as the best innovative employee of Metro Manila, one of the 2011 10 outstanding employees of Metro Manila, and one of the 2012 Cobra Pinoy Hero Awardees. More importantly, in 2014, Serezzo and his Pinoy Malakayan team received the award for Outstanding Volunteer Individual Youth Category from the Philippine National Volunteer Service Coordinating Agency. Right, so that's the end. Oh, not quite. A little bit more. Serezzo is truly an artist for the environment an advocate for youth empowerment and a volunteer with a purpose. So, well, what is the story about? Please answer and submit. Well, your answers should vary, but I would like to see the ideas, including that Mark David Serezzo founded Pin Pinoy Malakai Despite dire circumstances, and when everything seemed hopeless, he was able to show the true beauty and strength of the faith and the human spirit. How did Mark David Serezzo demonstrate love for others and the understanding of man's choices? Answer and submit. Your answers should vary, but I would like to see the ideas including that. Mark David Serezzo fused his talent to help and serve others and be an example of love for fellow men and selflessness. It's an odd spelling out. So what is the lesson of the story? What do we learn from that? What do you think? Hmm? Put your thoughts on that forward and pass them to me. We are capable of becoming selfless and finding the good in difficult and challenging circumstances. And how can you relate the story to your own life? Please answer that one, submit that. So your answers may vary, but I would however like to point out that man is a social being who can transcend his or her weaknesses for the good of others. Please read the in flame on page 13 and answer the reflection questions on page 13. <coughs> in flame. <coughs> Mark David Serezzo was born with a penchant, that's a liking, for creating artworks from rubber trimmings. His talent and skill did not only provide for him a source of livelihood, but also the opportunity to fulfill an important purpose, to be a living example of selflessness. While pursuing his dreams of becoming a great artist, he did not lose sight of the bigger picture that is responding to the challenge of reducing waste and recycling. He has also shown that his art can be used to aid his fellow human beings who are suffering. So reflection, you can fill in the answer. The rubber man finds time to hone his craft as well as help those in need. If the opportunity comes, are you also willing to give up some of your time and energy to help your fellow men? Why? Or why not?
to Mark David Sorezzo's actions show that he uses his talents to engage other people and inspire them to address global issues such as waste reduction and recycling. Do you have talents and skills which you think can be used for a higher purpose? How? <clears throat> and three, what are the qualities of the rubber man that you find admirable? Explain your answer. Now that you have answered the reflective questions on page 13, now I would like some students to also share their answers. Please answer and submit. So students, after a pause to consider these ideas we have been covering, I would like you to do the following. <coughs> Pair up, this goes into twos, Open and go in messenger group G10, mini PT, and then your pair number, lesson two, page 13. And one, summarize what you have learned. Two, identify something you have found particularly interesting. Three, ask any questions about confusing information. And four, make a prediction about what you will learn next. Okay, so this is about the lesson two that we've done so far up to the rubber man story. Okay, I'll probably give you your pair number as well <coughs> as, uh, as soon as I can. Anyway. Let's see what we can do with that mini performance task. Identify something you have found particularly interesting. And also ask any questions about confusing information. And then make a prediction about what you'll learn next with your partner. So share and show your ideas, should be, and answers on your pair group. <clears throat> the GT mini PT pair number one, pair number two, pair number three, and so on. From lesson two, page 13. Show me, and I will share them on to the group chat. So, students, I would like you to define. We're now on page 14 of your PDF. This uh, first part isn't isn't precisely on the text, it's just a tedious note for you to consider. I would like you to define using your own words the following, golden rule, two, friendship, and thirdly, meaningful relationship. And answer and submit those, please. And then, dear students, please read pages 14 to 15 of the book. Afterwards, there will be a mini, for, mini performance task needing you to go back to your storyboards you were on before. So on page 14 then, the ethic of reciprocity. That means reciprocate. Reciprocity. Are you familiar with the golden rule? Popularly stated as do unto others what do you want others to do unto you? So the golden rule has many versions coming from the philosophers and religions of the world. And then read below how some philosophers phrase this universal rule. And for the versions of the... Uh, actually, uh, neglect this part. I saw this had been taken out. Never mind that part. So Seneca, treat your inferiors as you would be treated by your superiors. Treat your inferiors as you would kind of like to be treated by your superiors. Epictetus, what you would avoid 
suffering yourself, seek not to impose on others. What you would avoid suffering yourself, seek not to impose on others. <clears throat> Socrates, do not do to others that which would, in, would anger you if others did it to you. And Kant, as a modern philosopher, Immanuel Kant, act as if the maxim of thy action were to become, by thy will, a universal law of nature. <clears throat> While there might be numerous ways of saying the golden rule or the ethic of reciprocity, what is common and universal among them is the concept that we must treat our fellow men with kindness, fairness, respect and justice. We should, we should relate to others in ways which we ourselves want to be treated. Rediscovering the other Prior to discussing the ways in which we would treat others and thereby finding out the significant contribution of other people in our lives, let us first rediscover and bring to our awareness what we mean when we speak of other people. According to various philosophers, other people can be viewed as either subjects or objects. When other people are, people are viewed as objects, they are reduced to mere living organisms with exactly the same physiological and anatomical structure as every human being. Also, when we look at them as objects, they are seen as simply a different manifestation of matter and energy. Furthermore, some religious fundamentalists also view other people as objects when they exclude non-believers and categorize them as people who belong to false religions. <clears throat> On the other hand, other people are viewed as subjects when we become aware of their uniqueness or difference from us. Although through our subjective encounter with other people, and illuminated by, by our experience, we gain a unity of experience wherein there is no distance anymore between ourselves and others. The philosopher Gabriel Marcel calls this intersubjectivity. Intersubjectivity is openness, availability, fidelity and faith from the individuals involved in the encounter. This entails, then, that we love and cooperate with others. Epiphany of the Other Epiphany is an experience of sudden and striking realization. When we see and realize other people as subjects, we then discover that our life is intimately linked to the other. Page 15, then, desiring to be of service to others. In our human relationships, we are called to desire nothing but the best for the other. The self, or I, works for the other so that the other can live. In our desire for the other to live well, the self can never be satisfied with how much it can give to the other. Our responsibility then to the other whose existence to the self or I is acknowledged to, to be autonomous and superior to that of mine is absolute. Hence our knowledge and understanding of human beings is formulated in the service to the other. It is through other people that we owe our humanity. However, 
Is it possible to live a life that constantly desires to serve others? <clears throat> the Nobel Peace Prize laureate and founder of the religious congregation Missionaries of Charity, St. Teresa of Calcutta, who dedicated her life in the service of the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, the blind, the lepers, and all those who cared, at all those people who have felt unwanted, unloved, and uncared for, said, <clears throat> I must be willing to give whatever it takes to do good to others. This requires that I be willing to give until it hurts. Otherwise there is no true love in me, and I bring injustice, not peace, to those around me. Okay, so that brings to the end the ethic of reciprocity, rediscover, the epiphany of the other, desiring of, to be of service to others. So now, students, please go back to your storyboards. I would like you like to challenge you to improve them by inserting a scene that depicts the ethics of reciprocity. The story should show how the ethic of reciprocity can improve and deepen our human relationships. So that's your mini performance task three. And I want you to show that work as well. Inserting a scene that depicts the ethics of reciprocity. And it should show how the ethic of reciprocity can improve and deepen our human relationships. And now? Please answer the three, two, one chart on page 15. <clears throat> so three things that I have discovered about how I relate to others. One, two, and three. Two things that I can do to pursue or further develop my skills talents and interests, and use them in the service of others, one and two. One goal that I hope to achieve this year that is beyond my circle of influence. Got that? That's your mini performance task again. Consider the value of man desiring of service to others. I think desiring to be of service to others, that should be. <clears throat> I believe to be truly successful and live a wholesome life, you must be in balance with all aspects of life and being of service is a big part of that balance. This means being of service to others in whatever way fits your lifestyle, whether it's mailing a check to your favorite charity, donating time to the homeless, or assisting in your community as a mentor. It's as important to you as to those you may serve. Valuing a virtue, selflessness. So please read pages 15 and 16, the bottom of page 15. I would like to explain about the featured virtue of selflessness. Selflessness is the quality of caring more about what other people need and want than about what you yourself need and want. Selflessness is defined as having little concern for one's own interests. A selfless person is somebody who is concerned more with the needs and wishes of others. We now turn our gaze on how selflessness can guide us in our relationships with others. From the philosophical arguments of Martin Buber, we can glean a negative definition of selflessness. Negative in the sense that these are the, thing, these are the things that prevent us from having a relationship of being. Speechifying. <clears throat> Speechifying happens when we are more concerned about 
telling how we feel to the other rather than focusing on the other's needs. It is failing to fully focus on another person and being focused on oneself. So we're on page 16. Now that's about speechifying. Propaganda. So propaganda prevents a person to have a relationship of being because the propagandist cares not for the other but only for winning the other to his or her idea of truth. Reductive thinking happens when a person looks at the other as a totality or entirety in himself. The self looks at the other person and puts him in labels and this is reducing a person to a label. If we critically look at the means by which the relationship of being is not recognized in the aforementioned examples, we see that they all point to the self. The self is the focus, the source of truth and the one who gives labels to the other. Therefore, to be selfless means that we regard others as the very one or the subjective person that he or she is. <clears throat> Martin Buber says, the chief presupposition for the rise of genuine dialogue for a relationship of being is that each should regard his partner or the other as the very one he is. It's a bit confusing <laughs> language, I think. I become aware of him, aware that he is different, essentially, from myself, in the definite, unique way which is peculiar to him. Okay, I was just uh, looking up some notes on who Martin Buber actually is. So he's a German philosopher. So, yeah, let's not dwell too much on that. <clears throat> Selflessness is also beautifully expressed in the following poem attributed to Sister Teresa of Calcutta. People are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. Ulterior motives, sneaky, sneaky motives. You're, you're trying to do it for sort of make money only for yourself. Well, be kind anyway. If you are honest, people may cheat you. Well, be honest anyway. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Well, give your best anyway. And from Nina Hagen, a quote there. Do some selfless service for people who are in need. Consider the whole picture, not just our little selves. So, students, let's look at page 17, as here we have the trivia. Do you know that there are many acts of selflessness and self-giving that are happening in our country today? Below are just some of them, and perhaps we can support and emulate them. The Physicians for Peace, Philippines. The this is the amputee care program called Walking Free, 
of the Physicians for Peace Philippines, which helps amputees by providing them with affordable, accessible and appropriate mobility devices, such as prosthetics, which are prosthetics are false arms and false legs, crutches and canes. From 2005 to 2013, the program has already helped 5,252 individuals. <coughs> Excuse me. Family Cooperation Health Services Foundation. The mission of Family Cooperation Health Services Foundation, or FAMCOSEF, is to teach health workers to monitor elderly people in the area, remind pregnant women to have their prenatal checkup, or contain outbreak diseases among children in urban depressed communities. To date, FAMCOSEF has already trained hundreds of health workers in Muntinlupa, Las Piñas, Paranaque and Laguna. Bojo Alaguinsan Ecotourism Association, BAETAS. <clears throat> the BAETAS is the custodian of the ecotourism project funded and launched by the municipal government of Alaguinsan, Cebu. It is mostly made up of fishermen, housewives and their children who act as qualified Alaguinsan river guides. <clears throat> teachers of local history and promoters of marine resource protection. They are also considered as the protectors of the Alaguinsan River and the mangrove forest. So now students please read page 18. I would like some volunteers to share how you can motivate others. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a sore throat. So the uplifting realizations there. We are called to be selfless in relating with others, with other people. The following are some suggested ways on how that should be. We can develop meaningful relationships with others. Firstly, you broaden your perspective. And basically, two L's, this means that a selfless person has the ability to see beyond his personal concerns and empathize with others. A few spelling mistakes here. Also, a person who is consumed by his or her problems and status will find it extremely difficult to be selfless. Hence, having greater awareness of the world outside you is the first step to becoming selfless. <coughs> Listen intently when other people are talking. <coughs> Focus on the person talking to you. And resist the temptation to immediately respond or allow your mind to wander. Try to get completely absorbed in someone else's story. Think about how other people feel. Empathy means that you feel and understand as well as share another pers person's experiences and emotions. Hence, if you really understand how someone else feels, you will be moved to act selflessly toward that person. Be selfless even when no one notices. It is said that a good deed is its own reward. Selfless people don't act with kindness and generosity with the expectation of getting anything in return. They do it because it's the right thing to do and because it feels good to help other people in need. <clears throat> Dear students, please write a pay it forward note that entails you to practice doing selfless acts for the next 30 days. That's a mini performance task for Students, please answer the points to ponder on page 18. 1. Have you experienced how challenging it is really listening to a person? 
why is it necessary for us to suspend judgment, give advice, or immediately give a re response when a person is talking to us? Two, can you describe situations or events wherein you really felt that a friend empathized with you? How did that make you feel? Please answer and submit. And again, do you think people will be selfless even though nobody will praise them or give them credit? Please explain your answer. Answer and submit. Engagement, the summative test. Identify, it should be, the person or the concept that is being described by the following items. And write your answer on the space before the number. And on page 19. Firstly, this refers to the idea that we must treat our fellow men in ways which we ourselves want to be treated. Two, this refers to seeing the human person as a mere living organism with exactly the same physiological and anatomical structure as every human being. And three, this refers to looking at human persons and becoming acutely aware of their uniqueness or difference from us. And four, this refers to an experience of sudden and striking realization. And five, this refers to the openness, availability, fidelity and faith that is present among individuals who cooperate with each other. <clears throat> Just want to check those. Yeah. Six, this refers to whom we owe our humanity. And seven, this refers to the rubber man of Marikina City, who is a model of selfless service. Eight, this refers to the philosopher who said that we gain a unity of experience when there is no distance anymore between ourselves and others. Nine, this refers to how we should practice our freedom, especially when we truly consider the other. Ten, this refers to how we view other human beings when we value them just like we value ourselves. A selfless act. Think of an opportunity at home and in the community wherein you can do a selfless act. Then try your best to perform the selfless act. And if possible, <clears throat> make sure that nobody knows that you did it. Write your selfless act on a document, but do not write your name. This is adapted for online class. And then pass this to the GC. Each classmate can add their selfless act to the Word doc X. Okay. We will all be able to open and read and add our ideas to the list anonymously. Also, I just want to make a note here as your teacher <clears throat> that with any Word document, I also prefer it if you, once you've made your additions to the Word document, screenshot that because then we don't have to open it and wait and open another app to see it. We can just see it straight away. Yeah? <clears throat> so you can put both things. So then, we're on to page 20. Situation 1. Your friend is a popular student in school because she is always involved in outreach activities and encourages other students to donate and volunteer to help victims of natural calamities. <coughs> also, she is a member of various academic organisations and a well-respected member of the peer counselling group. You tell your friend that you really admire her selflessness. However, she gives a wry smile and tells you, I'm doing these things because I want to receive the school service award at the end of the year. How can you help your friend rediscover the beauty of service and being selfless without asking for anything in return, answer and submit the 
solution one, the solution two, and your best solution. <coughs> Situation two, the president of the student council has proposed a project called Give Back Mondays, which basically asks students to bring relief goods, clothes and toiletries every Monday. The donations will then be collected and stored for immediate distribution when natural calamities strike the community or nearby areas. The Student Council President argues that Give Back Mondays is a proactive activity that will ensure help will be given at the soonest possible time to those in need. <clears throat> Some of the students <clears throat> Some of the students uh, are opposed to the idea, saying that it will be a burden and there is a possibility that the relief goods will be damaged in the storage area of the school. The president of the student council is convinced of the merit of the project, but it will not prosper unless the students support it. How can you help the student council president and the opposing students come to an agreement? using the lessons on listening and selflessness so that you can come up with a win-win solution. Answer and submit your solution one, solution two and your best solution. And then we're on to page 21 with a performance task. And then here's the scaffolding for the performance task that you can build it on. On an infographic or piece of paper, draw a concept map about how we should relate to our fellow men. Include how you can use your talents, skills, energy and time to engage others and inspire young people in responding positively to challenges that are beyond their circle of influence. Okay, there's the criteria. It has a high quality, it's very appealing and skillfully done for three points. About unity, highly cohesive concepts and highlighting one another. And the purpose of it, it, out, it achieves the task objective successfully, convincingly. One point, the concept map has a low quality, less appealing, unskillfully done. And it's unity, it, it are, in terms of unity, the concepts are unrelated to one another, just one point, and purpose doesn't achieve the task objectives. So the summary, we must treat our fellow men with kindness, fairness, respect and justice. We should relate to others in ways by which we ourselves want to be treated. Intersubjectivity is openness, availability, fidelity and faith from the individuals involved in the encounter. This entails, then, that we love and cooperate with others. And when we see and realize other people as subjects, we then discover that our life is intimately linked to the other. Our knowledge and understanding of human beings is formulated in the service to the other. It is through other people that we owe our humanity. To be selfless means that we regard others as the very one or the subjective person that he or she is. And the quote then from Marcus Tullius Cicero, non nobis solum natis sumus, we are not born for ourselves alone. So that's the end of lesson two. The closing prayer. Reverently do we pray to thee, the holy and perfect one, we earnestly resolve to understand thy teaching and to daily tread thy path. So shall, like thee, we may attain the peace of Nirvana. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.